guys, I'm Peter from Builder Boeing. It's now 2020 and if I look back on the last year, one of the things that I've been busy doing has been rewiring uh, my entire cockpit. I've bought additional interface cards and they need to be rewired into these cards and then of course reassigned in the software and that just takes so much time. And it's not a very fun job, so it's something that I've been postponing a bit. So that's why the cockpit hasn't been used that much. Things haven't been uh, working properly. I took the pedestal out yesterday and did the same. Early on, I just had one master card connected with a very big parallel cable to the main instrument panel. And then I had four display cards. You can see two of them there. But yesterday I installed additional master card here and a uh, open cockpit expansion card. So now it can be USB connected. I could do with five uh, display cards, but as I only had one master card before, the maximum you can connect is four. So that's why I only have four right now. But I'm uh, hunting, see if I can uh, hunt down a fifth uh, display card. One of my problems before was that uh, when too many uh, annunciators were on, some of the seven segment displays would blank out. And uh, hopefully using two master cards and uh, a closed circuit here that's not connected to the main instrument panel, uh, hopefully I can prevent that. Bear in mind, this is one of my first things that I made. After the main instrument panel, I made this box. And then you can see along the way, I've had to make some modifications here. I'll come back to that very shortly. Let me um, just point out here is a power supply for my printer and a 12 and a 5 volt power supply. That's what's in the box. Over here, welcome to Spaghetti Land. And I'm sure now you're thinking, oh my freaking God what's going on um, and that is due to this being open cockpits i need to uh, wire all the seven segment displays from here all the way to the interface cards other solutions have microchips down here with the uh, seven segment displays and then you just need a small ribbon cable but uh, i need to want to have the wires from these uh, displays going all the way to my interface card which is placed right there if we isolate this panel, this is the communication radio, and this with the plexiglass over here is the navigation radio on the captain's side. This is the switches. This is a uh, encoder and transfer switches. This is the backlight. They're daisy chained. And everything you see here, all these wires has to do with seven segment displays. Some of them run down here. And of course, if I should redo my panels, I would build an enclosure here, a box, so that only the wires going out of the panel would be visible. But they are all these wires. This is daisy chained to the navigation radio because they share uh, this, the eight wires that you need. And then the rest of them here is bundled together with the navigation radio and the ADF radio. And all these wires need to be connected to the display cards you can see there. Furthermore, I have a bundle here with the LEDs and then I have a bundle, let's see, right here with all the switches that needs to go into the MasterCard on the captain side, which is over there. Same goes from over here, bundles as well for seven segment displays and uh, LEDs and so forth. So it's actually, this is actually nice and tidy. It's just difficult to see because there are so many wires and it's not enclosed. But um, if you are building a pedestal one day, you should really consider building boxes for each panel. And furthermore, if you're building a pedestal one day, just one thing, I use these eight H-shaped profiles and they are very good. They're very steady and uh, things doesn't flex. But I bought these real panels a few years ago and just see here, if I line it over here, you can see it doesn't fit. So make sure that the room you have between those rails are big enough or is big enough and um, from free from memory, I think this should be a maximum of nine millimeters. So find some L-shaped uh, profiles that's nine millimeters thick or wide. Furthermore, and as I said, this is one of my first builds. So the entire structure just leans and these lays in these two, and I've had to cut holes to make room for panels along the way. And if you are making this box one day, I would recommend that you make support there, 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 and there for those L-shaped rails. Because you can see if I take this, I know the weather panel isn't going here on the side, but uh, it kind of demonstrates what I'm trying to say. 
I cannot fit the panels down here anyway because this is too wide. I have an audio panel over there, as you can see um, behind the statue. And I'm not able to fit that either right now, so they're just laying around. And I'm not going to rebuild the entire pedestal at this point. Now it's just a matter of rewiring this, reassigning it, and then hopefully I'll be up and on my way shortly. Fast forward a few weeks and the pedestal is now back in the cockpit and working. You can see all the seven sigma displays are lit. They get enough power now, so they are not uh, blacked out. When I took the pedestal out and turned it around and did all that work, some of these came off and I haven't glued them on yet. It's just a matter of some glue and then they are back on. I also did manage to install this, which is an OEM panel. That's a panel from a real aircraft and I reckon this is from a Boeing 727. So this has been flying around the world for like 40, 50 years or so. It's not interface though, because the audio logic in this box is different from what you have in a normal simulator uh, logic. Over here you have a lot of potentiometers and switches, and that signal is, is that sent into a computer where all the audio processing is happening. Whereas on this box, the audio signal goes into this box and is then amplified. You can turn the, uh, the audio on and off, you can turn it up and down and then the audio goes out to the speakers or to the rest of the aircraft. So that's another logic and that's why I haven't interfaced this yet because it, uh, it's a totally different way of working and I haven't found out if I can get signals from this uh, potentiometer and these switches uh, get that out of the box. I'm not sure I can. So for now it's just looking good but it does a very fine job in looking good. The only thing that I've interfaced is this switch here. When I pull that down my uh, microphone signal from the from the captain's headset is transmitted to that sim, uh, and I have a similar switch over here for the first officer side. When this is pulled down, the uh, microphone signal from the first officer side headset is transmitted to that sim. So here you can distinguish between which of the pilot is talking to the ATC. I also have a weather panel laying around, OEM weather panel. But uh, I need to do some rework on the inside because uh, the potentiometers are of a different value. So I need to, uh, to switch them. And it's a bit of a, I don't know if it's a risky business, but I just need to know what I'm doing before I embark that adventure. So that has been laying around for a bit. From here on, I like to do some 3D printing for these switches to make them look more like a real thing. I'm still using a uh, single encoders here. So when I turn these, uh, the integer is moving up and down and then I need to push down and turn and then the decimal is uh, changed. It works very well, it's coded in uh, open cockpits, SIOC, and uh, if you don't have dual, dual uh, encoders, this is a very good way of uh, interfacing encoders, single encoders in your cockpit. Okay, I think that's it for now. I hope uh, you can use these tips if you are doing a pedestal yourself. I'm Peter from Bilderbung. You guys take care. Bye.